I've never heard of the word compersion before. Uh, last year, I didn't hear about the word compersion until I started studying polyamory and other kinds of arrangements besides the traditional uh, monogamous marriage. And it's basically means the, op the opposite of jealousy. And um, I don't think it should, it should just be applied when uh, it comes to polyamory. I think it should be applied to life, no matter what uh, practice of home and love you practice. Um, I mentioned the others uh, in Geismic, uh, modesty. I mentioned safe home. I mentioned ethical love. I mentioned integrity. I mentioned gratitude. They're all very fine qualities to have in universal ethics. Compersion is probably the principle that's the least talked about in our society in America and probably around the world in most developed countries because uh, the idea of polyamory is taboo, the idea even of LGBTQ, etc. Um, it's being talked about more, there's more education going on about it, but there is still some attitude there and I'm not talking about that right now. I am talking about compersion as applied to life. When you're uh, dealing with people in general, especially people you don't like or people that get on your nerves or people that you wish you wish you had something of theirs. And for me, it was inspired also by the Ten Commandments the uh, in the Bible, um, thou shalt not covet one's wife. And um, covet means going after. Um, other people might disagree and say covet means to desire, but desire is not an act. It can lead to an act if you don't know what it is and uh, you don't think, you don't feel like you can control it, then it may very likely lead to uh, covetous behavior. But compersion is when you're happy for someone. Now, I'll give you a very extreme example here. And again, it's not about uh, a sexual relationship. It can be about this. Suppose you're hungry and you're homeless and it's dark and it's cold outside and you're on, you're on the street or you're, you're, on a, you're on a street and there is a mansion practically over your head and you know that there are rich people living in it there's a rich person living in there and uh, maybe he's having a party maybe a Christmas party or something and um, you can hear the voices and the laughter streaming out of the windows and you know that it's warm and safe in there you know that there's food and drink in there and you wish you could be in there you wish you could even have a place to live you know and something to eat and something to drink and it's not fair, you know, in, in my opinion, it isn't fair that, that only some people can even get their needs met, let alone have that. And others go hungry and they don't even have a place to live, let alone food to eat. So it's really, un seems really unfair. Okay, I don't know. I, I got a notice on my calendar, probably to remind me to go to an appointment today. Sorry if you heard a loud noise. Um... Anyway, back to the discussion, you, um, it's just, it's unfair, you know, but I want to picture this, being happy for them anyway. They may not even be aware that you're out, out here suffering and cold and hungry and tired and whatever, maybe even sick. They might not be aware of it, and if they are, they, they very likely don't care. But being happy for them anyway. Now I had to go through extreme pain. I didn't go through that, but I went through extreme pain in the in the area of romantic relationships, and I went in through extreme pain with friendships. I went through extreme pain with my recent experience with Olga. It was it was hell. It was horrible. A whole year of it, you guys. But being able to be happy for her anyway, being able to send blessings her way. She's in the hospital or she's, maybe she got out and didn't call me. 
but I'm still sending blessings her way. I'm still happy for her. And I can actually be happier being happy for her. And I guess if, if you're in that extreme situation that I uh, described, it might be more difficult to be in a place where you can be happy for someone because you feel like you have no room. You're, you're suffering. But the attitude, you guys, that's what I talk about. The attitude. No matter what, you could be going through hell in a handbasket. And you can still have a positive attitude, even if you don't feel positive emotions or positive thoughts. Try and do it anyway. I'm happy for people. I don't like problems. I don't want people to suffer. I don't want to suffer. Life isn't fair. And I want it to change. And I will do my part in helping it to change. You got that. <clears throat> I hope we can all do that. <clears throat> In the meantime, I'm happy for everyone. And I do feel sorrow when someone else is suffering. Compersion is about love. It's not about, you know, pretending nothing's wrong. Jealousy is very destructive. Jealousy and envy are very destructive. You could be doing all right and still want something from someone else. Oh, I wish I had this, you know, I wish I had the same color jacket. I wish I had that person's shoes. I wish I had a car. I wish I had blah, blah, blah. And that, that's okay. You know, you can, you can wish for it, but don't feel like hurting them or taking it away from them. That's theirs. That's still theirs. They have a right to it. And we all have a right to have our needs met. Take care, everyone.